Are you ready for some retaliatory assault? GameRanks brings you 10 Counter-Strike facts. Number 10, there was a knife fight going on in Counter-Strike one time, and the gentleman who lost it got so upset that he spent six months tracking down the person he was fighting with online. This guy had no idea how to follow the advice of Michael Jackson and beat it, which, believe it or not, pretty much depicts why you shouldn't get into real-life knife fights. This actually happened in France, and fortunately, the victim survived the attack. The guy missed his heart by an inch. One inch. The judge that sentenced him said this, You are a menace to society. I am frankly terrified of the disproportionate reaction you could have if someone looked at you the wrong way in the street. This is the kind of person who does need to be locked up. What the hell? Number 9, in 2007, a student was arrested and expelled from high school after creating a Counter-Strike map of said school. Now let's be real, that's kind of fucked up. I mean, none of us are gonna stand here and say, oh yeah, that guy was definitely gonna shoot up the school. And that doesn't automatically mean you're some kind of violent serial killer, I'm not gonna say that, because we've all made maps of places that we know, those of us that can make maps anyhow. And it's more the familiarity rather than the shooting things up part. But still, I wonder exactly how it is that every Everybody found that he made it. Did he share it with everybody? Because that indicates maybe a weird motive. Because frankly, you can make a map and not share it with anybody pretty easily. In fact, it's probably much easier than sharing it with enough people that the school knows about the shoot 'em up map that you made of your school. This was like right after the Virginia Tech shootings, though, so it like people were rightfully on edge. Do I think that that's necessarily an appropriate reaction to that? Hell no. Arresting him? What? That's silly. Maybe you recommend counseling. For him and figure out exactly why he did it before you start doing shit like that, but you know, whatever. Number eight, Jack Thompson, who is the absolute smartest person on the planet, as in he's an unintelligent asshole with no information that relates to the real world at hand whenever he makes any decisions or proclamations, sent a letter to Bill Gates about Counter-Strike because apparently they were somehow responsible for Counter-Strike, despite it, you know, not being made by them at all. Uh, he actually wanted to pin the Virginia Tech shooting on Microsoft for Counter-Strike, which... Uh, Jack Thompson. Oh, fortunately, Jack Thompson got disbarred because he's an, just the stupid... I don't even know what to call Jack Thompson. He hurts my brain, the actions that man takes. And anyone who takes him seriously or uses anything that he says in a positive fashion or gives him attention or pretends in recent years that his opinion is somehow valid or worthy of consideration in any way, shape, or form are in the same class of absolute dipshit and should automatically not be taken seriously ever again. Number seven, there's a gentleman who does not have any limbs who plays Counter-Strike professionally and has been doing it since 2001. He used to use a joystick that he controlled with his leg stumps, but now he uses a mouse and keyboard. And yes, he streams on Twitch. Frankly, huge congratulations goes to this person. That is an incredibly positive thing. Not only has he won tournaments, and I hope that he's making a living on Twitch because he deserves it. That's called finding new ways to overcome adversity. Congratulations to you. You kick ass, sir. Number six, last year Valve actually suspended several North American players from Counter-Strike Global Offensive on account they were fixing matches, as in they were betting large amounts of money on matches they were participating in and then losing them on purpose because they were betting on the opposite team and losing them on purpose. This is the equivalent to Michael Jordan or Charles Barkley or some large name in basketball in the 90s betting on the other one's team when they were in the NBA Finals against each other and then losing on purpose to make a lot of money. Believe me, either of those two guys tap out for a game that's a loss, at least back then. Now I don't know anything about basketball. <laughs> but they know for a fact that this happened. There's traceable income involved with it. I hope that was worth getting banned, though. Actually, it probably was worth getting banned. I could use $11,800. Could you? Number five, Stuart Holden, who is a professional football player in a country that isn't the United States, so we we call it soccer, had a short career playing competitive Counter-Strike before becoming a professional footballer. Again, that's what they call people who play soccer outside of the United States. Stewart's a pretty accomplished football player, though. He was born in the UK, played in the UK primarily, and then came here to play. He keeps trying to delete this factoid that he had a professional Counter-Strike career from his Wikipedia page, but people keep putting it back, which is really amusing. As of right now, there's no major mention of it, but if you go down into the category section on his page, he is listed under Counter-Strike players, which is funny. Number four, after a Counter-Strike
Counter-Strike player said his team was all on Adderall in an interview. The largest esports organization, the ESL, announced that they're going to work with the World Anti-Doping Agency to implement drug testing. Now there's some implications here that I don't know I like because there are people who have Adderall prescriptions and need it. You know, it's a medication for ADD and ADHD, but I have to imagine having a prescription for that would take precedence over whether or not you get in trouble for using it. At least I would hope. This is actually a pretty new development. They only began talking about it last year, and really the effects on the league itself are not apparent yet. In truth, people might find they don't need drugs to be great, because real winners don't use drugs. Number three, in Russia they had a tournament for Counter-Strike, and the organizers actually hired strippers to try and distract the players. It did not work. Now, I just want to go ahead and say congratulations to the people who were playing the games that that did not work, because whether or not you are quote-unquote into strippers, that would be distracting on some level, especially if the point is to distract, the instructions given to them is to distract the people playing a game. I could imagine it being annoying even, but they hammered through it, they were able to play their games without any trouble, and good on them for that. Not falling for the whole, we can control you with your penis thing. Number two, there's a shooting range in Las Vegas that offers a Counter-Strike package, meaning the various guns in Counter-Strike are all usable if you buy this package. Anything from an HK MP5 to a Desert Eagle to a Beretta to a Glock M4 carbines, AK-47s, it's all there, and it's probably one of the only places you're ever going to shoot that stuff in your life. Frankly, like, it costs $695 to play around with these guns. Buying them, I'm sure, would probably cost you several thousand dollars. Finally, number one, McDonald's in Sweden actually named a burger after their national Counter-Strike team. The burgers are called McNip Burgers, as in M-C-N-I-P, as in McNip, as in sounds like McNipple. The professional gaming organization is known as Ninjas in Pajamas, which abbreviates to NIP, which is said nip, which sounds like nipple. McNip? I'll have a McNip, and I don't mean a McNipple, don't put a nipple on my burger. I mean the esports e team themed burger, thanks. Their healthcare system is graciously provided by the government in that country, and all of the patients are graciously provided by McDonald's thanks to people buying the McNip burger. Nip, nip, nipple. Ninjas in Pajamas. If you know any weird or interesting facts, about Counter-Strike, leave them in the comments. We're of course interested to hear them. If you enjoyed the video, please click the like button. And if you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every single day of the week and the best way to see them first is of course the subscription. As always, we thank you very much for watching this video and we will see you again next time right here on Game Ranks.